This is the second installment of the Protestant Mythbuster series, the myth of Constantine founding the Catholic Church. Hi, I am Ryan Zell. Those lacking knowledge are the pawns to every lie of the demagogue. Proudly, they fill the void of learning with filth taken as the truth. The myth that Constantine invented Catholicism is a common culminy spread by Protestants, particularly in the United States, where an undercurrent of anti-Catholicism has existed since the pilgrims brought with them the vitrolic Geneva Bibles. What are the origins of the Protestant lie? Alexander Hislop originated this myth in the pamphlet, The Two Babylons. The myth appears to have arisen when Alexander Hislop, finding a need to substantiate the Protestants' farcical claim that the early church apostatized, settled on scapegoating Constantine. Who propagates this lie? Robert Woodrow, who wrote Babylon Mystery Religion, has since recanted. Jack Chick of Chick Publications was another proponent of the book. Jehovah's Witnesses quote from it extensively. Many independent preachers and other anti-Catholics have propagated this lie as well. One must ask, who believes this lie? This culminy is held as being true by Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah's Witnesses, Fundamentalists, and many non-denominational Protestants. Other non-mainline Protestant groups buy into this view. Most who believe in this myth are of the lowest strata of society, intelligence, and education. What evidence for this lie? Unlike most myths, this one is unusual in being that the proponents do not provide any evidence other than their repeated and loud assertion and purely contrived conjecture. This is one of those lies told where the hope is that the louder and more forcefully one asserts the lie, the lie would become the truth. We call this the big lie. Who was Constantine? Well, Constantine was son of Constantius Chlorus, who would later become a Roman Augustus, and St. Helena, a Christian slave. Upon his father's death in 306 AD, he was made a Roman Caesar by Galerius, rising to the Roman Augustus in 309 AD. Together with the Augustus Licinius, he proclaimed the Edict of Milan, granting Christianity status as one of the legally recognized religions in the empire. He prohibited Christians from taking part in pagan festivals and rituals. Sunday was proclaimed a general day of rest. What are some of the claims made? One, Constantine founded Catholicism on paganism. Two, Constantine changed the day of worship to Sunday to worship Saul, a minor sun deity. Three, Constantine was the first Catholic pope. Four, Constantine presided over the Council of Nicaea. Five, Constantine made Catholicism the official religion. Six, Constantine built the first churches. These are just a short list. Let us examine the silly Protestant claims using history and logic, starting with the last in reverse order. Protestants claim that Constantine built the first churches. Prior to Constantine, there were only house churches. The reality is that churches existed prior to Constantine becoming emperor. Archaeologists have discovered churches in Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and Israel, which have been dated prior to the reign of Constantine. The church historian Eusebius and Lactantius indicate that churches were destroyed and church property confiscated during a Diocletian persecution. There is more than enough evidence that churches as places of worship existed from the historical and archaeological record. This lie is busted due to the overwhelming evidence. Another claim, Constantine made Catholicism the official religion of the empire. Constantine did not make Catholicism the official religion of the empire. That was left to Theodosius I, who proclaimed the Edict of Thessalonica in 380 AD, in which he decreed that Catholicism was the sole officially recognized religion in the empire. Constantine, together with Licinius, 
proclaimed the Edict of Milan in 313 AD, which granted Christianity status as a recognized religion. The Edict of Milan followed the Edict of Toleration, decreed by Emperor Galerius, which ended the Diocletian persecution of Christians. The Romans were a legalistic society. Edicts were required for making or breaking laws. There is no evidence that Constantine made Catholicism the official religion of the empire. Even if hypothetically he had done so, so what? There were many European states where Protestantism was the official religion. This claim is based on a historic era, which has no basis in history. This is an easily busted lie because we know with absolute certainty that Christianity became the sole religion of the empire in 380 AD, decades after the death of Constantine. Another lie? Constantine presided over the Council of Nicaea, which he called. The first ecumenical council of Nicaea was called by Constantine as he wanted to keep the empire united and the Arian controversy was causing division. Many considered Constantine and his family Arians. The sole exception was his mother, St. Helen, who was orthodox in her belief. The Pope of that time was St. Sylvester I and he suspected Constantine of Arianism and he appointed Hosius of Cordoba from the province of Hispania as a presiding bishop instead of a bishop who would be easily influenced by Constantine. The first council in Nicaea went against the favored faction of Constantine and anathemized the Arians. Following the council's decision, Constantine exiled Athanasius, the father of orthodoxy, as Athanasius was a constant irritant. Constantine, following the council, went so far as to sentence St. Alexander, the Bishop of Constantinople to death if he did not readmit Arius back into the Christian fold. The only reason the sentence was not carried out was because Arius died on the way to Constantinople. It is evidence that even Constantine favored Christians. Christians who had endured the worst persecution were unwilling to compromise their Catholic orthodoxy to gain favor with the emperor. These Christians were willing to stand against the emperor who had done much for the once persecuted faith. Council documents make it clear that Hosius of Cordoba was the presiding bishop at the Council of Nicaea, not Constantine. Again, you are busted. This claim makes a Protestant look stupid. Protestants claim that Constantine was the first pope. This is one of the silliest arguments. The early church fathers provide a record of the bishops of Rome. There were 30 bishops of Rome prior to Constantine becoming the Augustus. It is the bishops of Rome, which those of the Western Church call the Pope. The historical record does not indicate that Constantine was ever the bishop of Rome. Constantine did not receive holy orders. Again, busted. Here is another claim. Protestants claim that Constantine changed the day of Christian worship from the Sabbath, Saturday, to Sunday to honor the pagan deity Sol Invictus. Perhaps the Protestants should begin by reading the Bible. The reason the early Christian church worshipped on the first day of the week instead of the Sabbath, because the first day of the week was the Lord's day, the day Christ resurrected. The Bible makes it clear that the early church worshipped on the first day of the week. Let's look at scripture. Acts 27. And on the first day of the week, when we were assembled to break bread, Paul discoursed with them, being to depart on the morrow, and he continued his speech until midnight. One, in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 2, On the first day of the week, let every one of you put apart with himself, laying up what it shall well please him, that when I come, the collections be not then to be made. In the Roman pagan pantheon, Apollo was the deity who governed the sun and was represented by it. However, Apollo himself was not the sun itself. Romans were pantheistic, but they were not astrologers. Astrolatory was generally not practiced by the Romans. The cult of Sol Invictus did not worship a Roman deity. It was introduced and supported by an Eastern Kingdom. The cult of Sol Invictus were astrologers, worshiping the sun as a god. Solus was a Latin nominative 
for the sun and used for centuries prior. Sol Invictus is the Latinized name for the deity of the cult. The, the cult of Sol Invictus did not worship their deity on Sundays as the seven-day week was not yet introduced. Rather, the day of worship of Sol Invictus was Antidium 17 Calandius Janarius, which is December 17. The Roman month was divided into calends, nuns, and ides, and not seven-day weeks. Some Roman military personnel who had served in the far eastern Roman providences belonged to this cult. They settled in Rome and were officially granted status as a recognized cult in 274 AD by the Augustus Aurelian. Constantine had no ties to the cult of Sol Invictus as he had been in the Roman military in the far west, Hispania, Britannia, and Gaul. In 321, A.D. Constantine introduced the seven-day week, which was used by the Christians and the Jews. When Constantine proclaimed the seven-day week, he also decreed that Sunday would be a day of general rest in the empire. Constantine prohibited Christians from taking part in pagan festivals and ceremonies. When one looks at the facts, it is obvious to a sane, rational person that Constantine was not a pagan, but a Christian, with perhaps Arian sympathies by conviction. Most persons would not be able to debunk this myth as it requires specific knowledge. Constantine did not make Sunday the day of Christian worship, but rather decreed Sunday a general day of rest as it was already the Christian day of worship. Sol Invictus was not worshipped on Sunday, nor was Sunday named after him. Rather, Dias Solus was named after the sun, which was not a Roman deity, but rather just the sun. Romans did not have a seven-day week, nor anything akin to a week in Julian calendar during the pagan Roman era. Let's look at this next Protestant myth more closely. Constantine founded Catholicism upon paganism. Catholicism already existed. Early Jewish Christians used the word Catholic to differentiate those who held the Orthodox beliefs from the heretics. According to St. Ignatius of Antioch in his epistle to the Smyrnians, wherever the bishop shall appear, there let the multitude also be, even as wherever Jesus Christ is, there is the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is also referred to in the martyrdom of Polycarp, circa 155 A.D., the Moratorian in circa 177 AD, which is one of the earliest attempts to provide a New Testament canon, refers to the Catholic Church and that the Pope occupies the chair of the Church in the city of Rome. Here is good advice from Cyril of Jerusalem in his catechetical lectures. Instructs Christians when visiting other cities not to inquire as to where the Church is, but where the Catholic Church is so as to avoid the wretched Gnostics and heretics, and we might add the Protestants. He further states that the Catholic Church is the particular name of the Holy Church, the mother of us all, which is the spouse of our Lord Jesus Christ. Constantine had nothing to do with the founding of Catholicism. Catholicism already existed. The bishops of Rome already existed. The liturgy already existed. The real presence was already believed. The word Trinity was already in use. But we would have to wait until 397 AD for the Bible to be canonized by the Catholic Church. The Consequences of Claiming the Constantinian Myth The Bible is a fallible book because it is clear that according to the Bible, Christians worshipped on Sunday while you claim Christians worshipped on Saturday. Well, the Bible claims that the Christians were worshipping on Sunday. Since you are certain that the Christians worshipped on Saturday, the Bible is obviously wrong and false. The Bible is a pagan book because it was canonized by what you determined to be the pagan Catholic Church. Well, the Bible would be a pagan origin because it was that church which you call pagan which put the Bible together. How could the inerrant word of God be canonized by a non-Christian pagan Roman cult? You might as well throw out the Bible because it is of a pagan origin. Christ is a liar because he did not keep his promise and a total apostasy occurred in the church. 
another one of my favorites. Christ promised that the gates of hell would not triumph over his church, and he would be with his church to the end of time. If there was a general apostasy from the church, where was the true church from 313 AD until 1521 AD? You would have us believe that Christ lied when he made that promise? The Trinity is not a Christian concept, but of pagan origin, as it was conceptualized and formulated by the pagan Catholic Church. While the Trinity was believed from the very beginnings, much of the conceptual formulation began to be clarified in detail only when Orthodox Christology came under attack. These clarifications occurred after Constantine became Augustus, so the Trinity is conceptually of pagan origin. Some of those who propagated this myth have recanted. Robert Woodrow, who based his book, Babylon Mystery Religion, on Hyssop's pamphlet, has since recanted. And he has stated that Hyssop's book was not based on any credible evidence or research and that Hyssop had no knowledge of mythos and that the two Babylons was a product of his imagination. While my original book, Babylon Mystery Religion, did contain some valid information, I could not in good conscience continue to publish a book against a pagan mixture knowing that it contained a mixture itself of misinformation about Babylonian origins by Robert Woodrow. Protestants, if you have to lie and spread falsehoods on behalf of your Protestant denomination, cult, or sect, do you think this is of the Holy Spirit, or have you become the tool of Satan? Said with all Christian charity.